What a perfect segue over to Dr. Greg Silverman joining us now to discuss where we are in Nueces County uh, as we inch closer to the 2000 mark of COVID-19 cases. Dr. Silverman, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, that story was just on mental health. Uh, what's some advice you have for people? I mean, they talked about people just glued to their iPads or their phones, you know, the tablet phone scenario. People need to unplug sometimes, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think the answer is to, is to continue to, to rely on your, on your family and friend, friends and people around you in that everybody sort of is in this together. That is, there's nobody who's isolated sort of alone. We're all being isolated continuously together. That is, so that everybody is kind of having the sh same shared experience of, man, this is not great. I'm having difficulty going to work. There's people that I know that are sick, but I'm doing this for the right reasons. And you have to rely on those people and the other people that are around you sort of virtually to say, yeah, we're having a hard time of this. This will eventually be over. Um, but we but we realize why we're doing this. You know, we've seen the numbers from the very beginning of this pandemic and the single digits to zero for days on end and out of you know, the last couple of weeks, it's been in the hundreds, two hundreds, uh, getting ready to put us over the 2000 mark here in, uh, right. in Nueces County. Uh, what, what do you make of this trend? What do you think we need to do? What are you seeing being done to accomplish that? Yeah, I, 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 I th the easiest things are wearing masks and washing your hands. This isn't a political issue anymore. This is a, this is a, 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 a medical issue. It's not a political thing. Um, we do know who has the worst go rounds of these uh, of this, and that is generally the elderly, those people who have the chronic diseases. We all, we understand that, but we also understand that if I'm sick, I am putting somebody else at risk for being sick, and that's the reason why you wear the mask. Um, I, I think that you have to. We have to double down, and I think that that uh, 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 Judge Canales is right on doubling down on making people wear masks, understanding what the problems are, and going back and realizing, yeah, I can make a lot of other people sick. So be careful. That's what we have to understand. You have two kids that are uh, in college right now. I, one of the comments I get from a lot of parents is, how do I convince my kid, my teenage kid, uh, this young adolescent, yeah. to wear that face mask, to take this seriously, to not go out and, and get in big groups and then bring something home? Yeah, that's that's the problem. You have to really sit them down and do that. And you have to be proactive. You have to wear it. You have to make them say, look, you have to wear this. This is what we want. This is what's going on out there. This is actually the rule out there that, that we're doing in Nueces County. Um, we realize now that there's very limited treatment options for this. There's no, remember we originally thought that hydroxychloroquine was gonna be part of this, was gonna be part of the solution and the antibiotics are gonna be part. It turns out that that's not true, that really this is, the treatment options here are uh, what we do for the flu anyway. Uh, there are very few antivirals, very few antibiotics, very few medicines that really work for this, rather than just putting somebody who has very, very sick in the hospital so you have to be careful and, and, and teach them and say, look, here's what happens. This is the potential problems. Here is why you have to wear a mask. Human trials are already underway for a vaccine. And I've read where yeah. some doctors are saying if 50% of the test subjects uh, benefit from this, then we're going to roll out with 50%. Uh, there, I guess yeah. it sounds like they're trying to give people at home hope. Do you think that's a safe practice or do we need to uh, wait until we're at least 75, 85, 90 uh, percent effective yeah. in this uh, uh, vaccine? I, I, I'll be honest. I, I would think if you can get 50 percent of the people treated, then you can really sort of put a, up a firewall against this. I think that's I think that makes sense. Having said that, I'm a little bit more skeptical about rolling out any kind of a, a vaccine to this. I'm I just I'm not really there on that page yet as far as our medical um, ideas go. I, I don't see how you get any kind of vaccine to this for at least a year. I just don't see how that happens. Um, it's certainly not a safe one. I, I, I certainly wouldn't want to be the first in line to take that, to take that vaccine. But I, you know, I, uh, having said that, yeah, I mean, if there's 50% of people get it, okay, that, that at least helps a lot. That really reduces the, the numbers significantly. So yeah, and, and then you could pick out which people are 
have or, or potentially have the worst outcomes. You could potentially do that. And that opens up a whole lot of people so that you, you're a little bit safer. That opens up yeah, where, where you at least see, yes, we do have some immunity to this disease. And here's who we're going to who, here's who's going to get it first. I, I, I would I would go with that route. Dr. Silverman, we always appreciate your input. It's good seeing you on this fine Monday, and we'll be checking back well, in with you all. next Monday for Dr. Zinn. Thank you, sir. Be safe out there, and we will have continuing coverage of all this and more with COVID-19.